up Super Game Eskimo, this is my top 10 best food and or drinks from gaming. Spoiler, Nong Shin Min's and Ramen Noodles are number 1. We've all been there. You're playing a video game and your character picks up some obscure food item. And then, all of a sudden, you've got a craving for that food. Even though you've never heard of that food, or even though what that kind of food tastes like. So here's just 10 food and or drinks from video games that I just really want to try. Enjoy! Super Mario RPG is a big game. In fact, some might say that seeing everything the game has to offer is... Thirsty work! <laughs> hint hint! There's a ton of items that can't be found anywhere else in the series, and one of the best is something called Kero Kero Cola, and it's kind of a big deal. It heals all party members in a single use, and is one of the most expensive items in the entire game. But even if you do have enough cash to actually pay for it, you'll find that it can't just be bought by any regular Joe, or... Mario. You have to prove you're worth it by showing the Soprano card. And just how do you get the Soprano card? Well, you'll need to play the Star Song for a guy called Todovsky, and own a Tenor card. And to get the Tenor card, you'll need to play the Mobile Mountain Blue Song and own the Alto card. And to get the Alto card, you'll need to play Todovsky's song, and as you can see, it's a very, very long process, but it's worth it. Just look at this thing! Call me shallow, but I would buy a Kero Kero Cola just so I could take home the cup! And I guess Coda is always nice too. For the most part, I just like Pokemon Stadium with a passion. All you do is fight, fight, and fight some more, which is honestly the most boring part of Pokemon. I mean, yeah, I did enjoy it in the handheld games, but it was more about the adventure. But Pokemon Stadium does have one saving grace, and that's the minigame section called the Kids Club. As you can imagine, the Kids Club is just a bunch of minigames in the vein of Mario Party. And one of them just so happens to be all about food. It's called Sushi Go Round, and the aim is to have your Lickitung eat the sushi, and at the end, have the highest bill. It's very basic, but at the same time, things can get pretty competitive. But putting it on this list is kind of cheating, because as an adult, I know that these aren't made up foods, since I can just have them at a sushi bar, and I already have. But as a child, well, I didn't really know any better. I wanted the spicy flatbread pie, the not-so-spicy flatbread pie, I'd even settle for the black frog's heads with red eyes. Not so much that drum of poison, though. Now, if you'd have told me that most of this stuff was fish, I would have been like... <laughs> when talking about food in Wind Waker, it's hard to make a choice. I could get a Hayu pear, I could get some choo-choo jelly. I'd even settle for some fish bait. Look, if it's good enough for man, fish boy, then it's good enough for me. But the one thing that never fails to get my mouth watering is elixir soup. After you've left Outset Island and commandeered the King of Red Lions, you can return home at any point to find your grandmother asleep. And ill. If you then incarcerate a fairy against this will and take it thousands of miles away from its home and let it go near grandma, really she'll be cured from her illness. From now on, whenever you return home, you'll find that grandma will have made you some soup. And that's all I can say about that. It's just soup made by grandma. But it looks pretty good. Hmm. Maybe I should have picked the pair. You know, the one that lets you control seagulls? <laughs> oh hey, another Zelda game, another Zelda soup. Now, I know that's kind of lame, doing the same type of food for the same series, but I didn't have to explain myself to you. I break the mold, you couch weasel! And anyway, this soup is completely different from Grandma's soup. This time, we have at least some idea as to what it might taste like, so there. The soup in question is being made by Yeto for his wife. You help him improve on the recipe, as apparently it's good soup, but not great soup. To improve on the soup, you add a whole pumpkin and some goat's cheese that looks like a donut. As well as the pumpkin and the goat's cheese, you also see a few chopped vegetables and a gigantic fish. And you know it's fresh because he had this fish earlier and it was still alive. So, I don't know about you, but this looks like one mean soup. And it's all mine! <laughs> Unlike most games of the era, Echo the Dolphin doesn't have any conventional health pickups, insisting on more realistic methods. Making this next choice a bit weird. Because 1. I hate the ocean. 2. I can't stand the taste of fish. And three, I don't particularly like the idea of eating anything that's still alive. 
So, as you might have guessed, to heal in this game you need to eat fish. Something that I dislike. But for whatever reason, whenever I play Echo the Dolphin, I find myself craving fish. There's just something so satisfying about seeing Echo eat a fish whole. Maybe it's that noise. Maybe it's the lack of animation. All I know is, this makes me want fish. Pikmin is a wonderful game about enslavement, and here's a little song that I always sing when I play this game of enslavement. I'm gonna eat the Pikmin! I'm gonna eat the Pikmin because they look like radish people, and I'm a spaceman, cause I'm a spaceman, and I go with a spaceman, cause I'm a spaceman. I have spent way too much time raising Chow. In fact, I've spent way too much time playing Sonic Adventure 2, period. But hey, it's the best Sonic game ever. Screw you, Liam Ramsey! The Chow are little creatures you can care for, similar to a Tamagotchi. You can even buy them stuff from a totally not suspicious guy inside a totally not suspicious locker that I'll probably do a loco locales on sometime in the future. You can get things like masks, buckets, eggs, and the largest selection of items, fruit. There's one shaped like a heart for fertility, one shaped like Chow's head, which is a bit weird when they eat it without question, and the one that's making this list, the dark Chow fruit, which to me looks like one big pistachio nut. And that just so happens to be my favorite nut. So I'ma put it on the list. The only reason it's not higher is because this is actually a fruit, meaning that rather than a hard crunchy nut, it's probably all squishy and gross and ugh. But a man will dream, damn it. Now, I just want to throw it out there that I am not a cannibal. That being said, the next food and or drink on this list is humans from Rampage. Does this not make you want to eat something? Come on, I can't be the only one. I guess I should kind of explain myself here. I eat not only by taste, but also by texture, and so it's not so much the flavor of humans that I crave, but rather that satisfying crunch, you know? It's just... Ah, oh, it's heavenly! You know what I mean? Let me guess, you're just here for that flying wolf scene that I was gonna put in. Well, good news, because here it is. Okay, so this was a toss-up between Rare Candy and Pokeblocks. And although I was initially leaning towards Rare Candy, I figured Pokeblocks would be the better choice because making stuff yourself is fun. And also finding candy that's been on the floor for god knows how long is unsanitary and probably crawling with bug Pokemon. The worst type of Pokemon, like Metapod and... and Metapod. Using different berries you've collected, you and up to four people use this machine to make Pokeblocks. From what I can gather, they're small cubes similar to that of a sugar cube, but are somewhat healthy. Just by eating one of these, you can raise your beauty, smartness, or even your cool. So throw away that razor scooter, kids, and grab yourself some Pokeblocks. And hey, they come in this handy dandy dispenser that looks pokey but screams Pez. Whether you're a poor college student or you just can't be bothered to cook, Nongshim Instant Ramen Noodles are the perfect food. Nah, my number one favorite food and or drink from any video game just so happens to come from my favorite video game. And before you try and guess in the comments, no, it's not life noodles. And no, it's not something obscure like trout yogurt, cause that's just gross. I'm keeping it simple and I'm going with some fast food. And not just any fast food, I'm talking pizza. Which if you didn't know is my favorite real life food to the point where I made a song about it. So in Earthbound, Mark Pizza is found in almost every town, and the odd thing about them is that despite having these many establishments, they're a delivery-only place. But that's what makes Mac Pizza so good. They will deliver to any location in exactly three minutes. Cave, no problem. 
48th floor of a skyscraper? Done. Center of the earth where giant dinosaurs roam free and will kill anyone that dares enter their domain and the only way you can get here is to go inside a giant dungeon man hybrid and get inside a submarine then go underwater? Of course, we'll be there soon. Not only that, but the owner and mascot delivers it to you personally. That would be like ordering a KFC and the colonel showing up in three minutes on foot inside a cave. Of course, there's no way of telling for sure how good Mark Pizza actually tastes, but I do have this Earthbound Scratch and Sniff sheet. And one of the smells is Mark Pizza flavored. And I assure you, it smelled delicious. So yeah, there's my top 10 best food and or drinks from gaming. I'm Super Game Eskimo, and I'll see you soon. Now get out of here. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you liked this, then be sure to check out some of my other videos. And if you have an idea for a top 10 you'd like to see, let me know and I might just do it. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter and to like and favorite this video. And that's it. I'm Super Game Eskimo, and I'll see you soon. Buenasuela. Whatever that means.